Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome back. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have two boxes. This one literally arrived today from Hannans. Uh, and it's this way up for a reason. My address is all on the other side. Uh -huh. But there's some extras in here for this and for another project. Let's uh, get to this first though. So we'll come back to those. So yes, the Airfix 172 scale Avro likes to be too. This was purchased uh, whilst on a visit to the Mindendale Museum with my good chum Greg and his partner Rachie. Um, he was going mad on, 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 on Twitter there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought, what's, what's going on? Usually when I get rapid ones, it's something going wrong. <laughs> so I to check. Sorry, sorry about that. Yes, so um, I obviously said his name too many times. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. And we the day we went for the right the run in the Shackleton. So um yeah, this is a very special kit because all these Mark II Lancasters were built at Armstrong Whitworth at Baggington, what is now a Coventry Airport. Um so to be able to buy a model of the of this aircraft literally across the airfield from where they were all made for real, the real ones were made, very special. Obviously, the immediate difference thing about the Lancaster Mark II is you have these four Bristol Hercules radial engines, as opposed to the more commonplace Merlin engines, like we saw in my Dunbuster Lancaster. Uh, these are air-cooled um, radials. Apparently, um, these were actually quite well liked. Uh, they had a reputation of being slightly tougher than the regular Lancaster because hits to the engine wouldn't necessarily knock them out because with the air cooling as opposed to uh, liquid cooling like the Merlin they could take that bit more punishment. It was something that was a bit of a theme throughout the war for different types of like P-47s made good ground attack aircraft for instance. So you get two schemes in the box. Um, something you don't get in this box and a little bit disappointing and we'll come on to in a minute. So... Here is here are the two schemes. And there's a bit of information you can pause and have a look on. So it was it was done because there was a shortage of Merlins. Or a perceived shortage of Merlins. Uh, translated by cartograph. There you are, model design in 2013. Also 2013 for the transfers and PAT schemes in India and licensed by BE Systems. Oh, I have opened it. Good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure I'd opened it or not. So you see the price is going up on these. Um, you possibly could find it cheaper online, but I don't mind because this goes to have the museum, so you know, it's a bit different, isn't it? So, how are we doing? I actually beat my last time by two minutes. Sorry, the tank video was five minutes, near six minutes before I don't even open the damn thing up. So here you are. What? Almost full. Pretty good. And the one thing I do like, I fix these pack these boxes nice and sturdy. So there is the model. Oh, sorry. That's the first time I caught it. Right. There is the model. Let's move that out of the way quickly. We're going to look for the instruction sheet and, and, and schemes first. So here is schemes. So this is scheme A. The Z Zombie number 4 8 squadron, 6th group, Royal Canadian Air Force, uh, based in Linton on Ouse in Yorkshire in 1944. So you see the nose art there, a bit of a bomb tally. Lots of do like both aircraft just do have a nose art to them. Very basic, very standard bomber command scheme. I like the fact they put the turret pose forward to encourage you to do something a bit different to the normal facing backwards, which is probably what mine will be doing. Uh, but I have some references of not for my one. And I'm doing this one. Which is Fanny Firkin 2 of uh, number 514 Squadron of Free Group. Sorry, Three Group. It's not spelt with an F, it's spelt with a TH. Um, Royal Air Force, Water Beach, Cambridgeshire, November 1944. So, a couple of reasons this, this one drew my attention first is one, this is for Royal Air Force, not Royal Canadian Air Force. Uh, no, I think no offense to the Canadians there, just I prefer, I do prefer a, a full RAF one. Uh, also, Duxford's in Cambridgeshire, my, my second home, as it were, is in Cambridgeshire, Duxford. 
Imperial War Museum, so I've, I've grown to be quite fond of that county. As I'm not as quite as fond of Lincolnshire yet, but uh, yeah, it's quite fond of that county. So uh, yes, this one made a lot of sense. Also, you get the bold Bombay and an underbelly turret. There's some other things going on. So what's already a very different Lancaster to other ones I've, I, I've built in the past or will possibly build in the future. This one's even more different again. So a lot going on here. What's really cool is there are photographs online of Fanny Firkin too visiting um, Dean Thorpe Airfield, which was home to the United States Army Air Force for the first um, ugh, for the first bomb group, I think. Yeah, it is bomb group, isn't it? Because it goes, there's only breaks down to squadrons, so you had four squadrons based there. And this did a lecture in '44. It was to load of American bases and there are photographs of it arriving at Dean Thorpe, which is not actually, again, as the crow flies, I mean, our crow is a sick man, but it, 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 as the crow flies, it's again not far from here almost, on you know, which is really, really cool. Just sort of really is the other, this little side of Leicester, really on the edge of Norfolk, Norfolk sort of area. So, you know, I think, Norfolk, anyway, yeah, wherever it is, it's not far away. If you look at it on the map, you put Coventry in one place and you look at Dean Thorpe and you zoom out enough, it, it gets really close together. <laughs> now, the one thing that's a bit of a contentious issue is this antique bronze. And this is what it tells you to paint the front of the. Um, well, it's actually the right, it's actually it's part of the exhaust. Um, all the engines collect into this ring here. And you see, I've done it like a copper colour here as well. And then come out of the exhaust here with the exhaust. See the colour of the exhaust? That's the colour that should be. Not this bronzy colour. It should be that colour. Look at the lights under. Or the blending. They can give a coppery tint to them, but they're not actually. They'd been at one point painted. Um, I think they were painted all around black, even on the top bits. Um, not necessarily in the legs, but on other aircraft. And eventually that paint would burn off. But yes, they'd be the same colour as this because it's all part of the same. What what makes that look the colour it does is going through all this as well. So, <laughs> you know, also you wouldn't get necessarily get the, the suck from the engines on this bit because of that's coming out of the holes here. But yeah, just to bear in mind. So yes, yeah, so I've got some reference pictures to build it to. And I'm going to pose the turrets in the same way that I think the pump gun's pointing down and all sorts. So I'm going to try and make it the same. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. It must be quite something. There's a very nice picture of all, all the Americans looking up into the Bombay. And obviously you've already got a bigger Bombay on the Lancaster than the B-17. But this one's got the bulge to it, so it would look even bigger. Transfers. So the cartograph, nice things, the instrument panels. You're not really going to see these, so I will use the transfers. There is an Edward interior set for it if you really want it, but... And this is the point you're not going to see it. Dot for the back of the pilot seat. Okay, why not? So you use them painting perfectly in a circle, I suppose. All the stencils, everything looks nice register. There's a zombie. And here is Fanny Firkin. Actually, there's no time to get closer. There was a bomb tidy to go with Fanny Firkin as well. Not as many as on B, but hey. Again, look reasonably thin. I'll say again, because I've literally just done the first one all the time. But yes. So there we are. And the instruction sheet. So, information about the aircraft. So if one is assembling the Bombay, putting the wing spars on, I do love this feature now, and it shows you the angles they need to be at. Then we get onto the cockpit, pilot seat, quite some construction. Parts you want to put him in, I'm not going to be on this one. I mean, it's a shame because I could have used that one on my Dumbo so like I did, but um, yeah, it's all going to be emptying on the ground this one, essentially like a car. Um, I could be unnecessary, you're not going to see it, but not going to hurt anything. I am now since the Shackleton, I'm keeping my eye out for things that could be unnecessary interior parts. Doesn't look like there's going to be too much in this one, 
So that's the buds of the table to go in. Lots of dry fitting going to be needed, but yeah, I think we could get away with most of this stuff. Just go to the interior parts down there. On my miss site, which you are going to see through that perspex nose. We proved that with the Dams Lancaster. In theory, the technology for the clear parts has got better for this one, so yeah, look at it since then. So if you can see it on that, you'll definitely see it on this. You can, it's quite a big canopy, so you will just be able to see the other navigator table. So I will put the maps on it and that. Um, and like I said on the track video, the, the, the bit of the, the run video, it was it's unnecessary stuff that wasn't needed that was, was causing fit issues. And this is what we look to avoid. Now that you're going to see, so it could be argued it's necessary. The radio equipment on the other side, maybe not, but we'll see. And the fortunate thing is, it's only half the fuselage and it doesn't cover the fuel full side, so it shouldn't interfere with the other half. It comes on, so some windows going in. Now, if you check your references, so it's a bit funny, Firkin, you see those windows are actually open, so keep that in mind. Sometimes, look at your references, I mean, like the Dams, Lancaster, the windows are there, they're just painted over because they, that's how it was done in the real one. So, check your references for those. I'll be checking the photographs, obviously, because. Hey, believe it or not, model companies get it wrong sometimes. <laughs> yes, closing up the fuselage. It should be a reasonably quick build, to be honest with you. And then you get to this bit where it slows down again. So we've got um, strengtheners and braces going in there. You have bulkheads and that going into the wing groups. That's fine. That gives, it will give it a nice bit of strength. Not sure about painting much of it, to be honest with you. Because you're not going to see into an awful lot of this. But yeah, maybe some basic black would just do the job just to make it nice and dark up there. But what I would do personally is, this is obviously the bit for me when I'm looking back at this, working out how I was going to do it. So, assemble all that, do this on both sides, attach the top of the wing, then sort of mask off along the join for the other wing. I'm not doing it. I don't think the flaps are done. I need to check my pitch. The flaps are done. I need to do this bit. Basically, mask off where I don't want the paint to hit on 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 joints. So we get on top of here as well. No, no, that would be unavoidable. I might have to just. Uh... I know you're going to see that bit. Yeah, so I can do it across there, and then so just spray it. Because it's 33. 33 is matte black, so. Ignore this 78, you're not going to see it. This 78 is ridiculous, that's an interior green colour. You're not going to see it. Even when the model's fully built, if you did put it in, you're not... How many times do you think the bottom of it? Even that on its in-flight I've done, you can't really see the, the underside that much. Um, so, putting the landing lights in, the lower wing going on, Looks fairly simple, looks very, fairly strong, which would be nice if you like that. Then we have the tailplane assembly. And that looks like it might be posable, which is something the old one could do as well. That's kind of cool. The assembly of the engines. This is this will be the first part that's different. You can actually get um, one-piece resin mouldings to replace these if you want to. I actually not, so I did get some resin replacements for this, but more on that later. Bulkhead going in there again, 78. Will you see it? Probably not. There's going to be a whole undercart leg in the way. So, again, black will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy modelling, eh? But let's be practical about this. We're trying to enjoy the hobby, not kill ourselves trying to get every minute thing in places that we can't see. Well, I'm not anyway. Putting the engines on, or the, the nacelles on. Um... Like the, its predecessor, you have to cut the I'll cut the um, part of the undercarriage. But okay, so what's nice when it's the on the on its predecessor, this was all one piece. You had to cut them apart. So you'd have to take these struts off these off if you want to do it closed. Um, if you're doing it open, you can leave them alone. <laughs> you don't put them on till here. Um, so yes, so undercar assembly. See what I mean? You might see that bit. Might. 
you know, it's like, so like I say, don't don't lose don't lose sleep over things you're not going to see. Especially once the doors are on as well, because they're quite big doors. Look at that. And I do like this cross section of showing you how it should look when you're together, and how everything should be orientated. Flaps up or down, that's really nice. I mean, they're, it's a shame they're either full full up or full down. There's no in between. <laughs> Um, and this is why it's really important to read instructions before you come to actually build your model because if you painted that 78 earlier, you can have a devil of a job actually sticking that in properly. Best to glue it all together, not paint it, and then prime it, and then just very carefully paint inside there, is my opinion. Not so the wrong way to do it, it's my opinion. Um, I don't think it doesn't look like the other ones, I suppose. Let's just pop back a second. No, the other ones are fixed, so that's that's a point down. Right. So uh, the rudders are posable, though. Look at it. You might be able to pose those. So it's a real shame because that the rudders for the the they were the one thing on the old one you couldn't pose, which would be nice to you know to get the full effect. It'd be nice to have these posed and the wheel tail wheel turn slightly, maybe make it look like it's parked up. Yeah, it swung around and parted. Um, some covers to go over the engine gaps, and the cell gaps there. Again, it's telling you to paint things here. You necessarily don't need to. All right, so, choice of Bombay, which version are you doing? And this is where I come to one of my problems with this kit. Bomblos and Suits model are available separately in the A05330 Bomblery supply set. For bomb load and location options, refer to diagrams page 22. From what I can see, that Bomblery supply set, it costs you nearly 20 quid. You've already spent £40 on a model. That's £60 just to get a bomb load. And you get other stuff that you don't necessarily want. That's ridiculous. I mean, fortunately, if I want to put some bombs in there, I don't need to because when, when I, the way I'm displaying it, where I'm setting it, is the exact day and time. Uh, and it didn't have had bombs on board, but I just think that's that's poor. That is poor. Give us some bombs, Airfix. That's gouging, in my opinion. But anyway, moving on. Bomb racks going in. Forever to remain empty, especially on my one. Tail wheel assembly. Nice that can be posed. You got the the. Again, that's nice and posable. Weighted wheels are a nice addition, so it actually gives it some weight. I will sand the tail wheel slightly because using references again, I've got plenty of pictures of NX six one one's tail and PA four seven four's tail. We can see the tail wheel on the ground because that would have some weight on it as well. By well, moments glass going in two separate parts, nice move. That was a bit of a fit issue on the on the damaged one. Probably one of the only ones it had. Turret assembly. This is where you start on the FX, on the old one. On the old FX one, this is the FX one, this is the current FX one. Nice that the middle panel is already open. So all in there, yep, yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, and in the underbelly turret here, which is obviously I'll be fitting up to, to my one. I'm led to believe that uh, John Johnson's Dam's aircraft had an underbelly turret, so I'll do a bit more research before I build that one. That's going to be a 40F scale, hopefully. Um... Front turret going on. So I'd fit this. I'd just put that in and then spray it as one. Just like the other one. So this is interesting. They've redesigned this slightly with the with the design there. I'm just noticing that there's no blister on this version. So I again need to check the references there just in case that's wrong. Um but yes, they did with there were two types. You got the, the Hong Kong models one, for example, comes with a choice of blister, or no blister. A little collar to go around the nose of that. See, you're not going to see an awful lot of that black you, you told you to paint earlier. It's ridiculous. Building the engines, you can get a whole set of new engines if you want to. I, I didn't. We'll see what I have got in a minute. Um, nice. Again, showing you orientation of the engines. A little paint them up nice and separately. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably build the engine separate, 
paint them off the aircraft, white tack the cowlings on so they are held in place for overall camouflage painting and everything and then we'll come back and put, add, the, add the engines on and, and put the cowlings back on the props and that sort of thing. There, there's the finishing off of the exhaust pipes. See, finishing off, not building of them because there's already a part of it there. Balances to the uh, elevators. Talking about the stand, if you want to buy the stands as well, don't miss a chance for a sale. <laughs> and balances on the on the ailerons. And that is your completed Lancaster, pretty much. Oh look, and there's the bomb loads that you didn't get. <laughs> right, let's look at the model. Itself. Huge bag, and it's all in one bag together. I never used to think that was a problem, part of the clear parts. I never think that was a problem. They were pointed out to me, if any parts um, decided to detach from the sprue and go missing, it makes them, make them slightly harder to find. Also, you've got parts rubbing against each other, moving and scratching each other, so yeah. So it's nice that the clear parts were in a separate. Two different volumes of glasses there. Take it one with the. Uh... You no, know, they quite literally look the same. It's got to be different somewhere. The seam line looks like on that one. Side windows, cockpit glass. Looks, looks transparent enough. I know we got it through plastic there, but the cut nicest way to kindest way to look at that. But there we are. So it's all the kind of bit. Right, here we are. This is made in made in India, so it's that same really soft plastic. So be careful, folks. Be careful. Well, at first you no, I tell I tell a fit. This feels a bit more akin to the Fuga's plastic, which is nice. So some guns down there. Turret assemblies, the back of the front turret. Oops. <laughs> Drop it, Christopher. Pretty nice details. It's like the standard Bombay here. Never seen any one figure. Nice to have this part of the undercar and this on the old one, you had to build that. That's nice. It gives it more strength if it's moulded that way, of course. So I've got a spare, spare pilot for another project, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, here we've got the Bombay floor. Oh, that's, a... that's the inside of the aircraft. There's the Bombay floor. And there's a slot for you to cut, to put your stand into if you can buy the Airfix one. So they want the wing spars, wings themselves. A bit of a textured surface to them, which is interesting. There you see there, scratch. What I'm talking about. So hopefully I'll show you through when it's built. Nice texture to show the fabric covered later on, so there's the fuselage. Deeds on the other side. So again, don't do too much thick paint on this. It's going to be black inside. Think about night bombers. <laughs> right. What have we got next? We've got the opposite number. So you can see those weighted wheels down here. Another wing spar. Bombay ends. The underwing, 
and the other fuse last night. And sadly, the crew door can't be done open. I was going to get a ladder to pose for that, but as it can't be opened, I'm not going to start hacking into this kit. And I wanted to be reasonably out of the box with a couple of a couple of modifications that I'm going to try out for the first time, but yeah, yeah, that was alright. Right. Finally, the sprue has our engines on it. This is the B2 sprue, clearly, because this has got everything that's different on the on from the regular Lank. So you've got the bulged the bulged Bombay here, all the radial engine stuff, the spinners. Underbelly turret guns, the props, nacelles. This thing was very crisp. I can't. I'm spotted any flash so far. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that's what you get in the Alpha Lancaster B2 kit by Airfix. So now. I got some goodies, didn't I? Let's move all this to one side. Things to try out for the first time. So here we are, here we are. The goodie box. So, first up, you can immediately see there's a camouflage painting mask for a Lancaster B2. So the idea is you put the masks, it's got pre-cut masks, you put them out on the, on the aircraft and you can just paint straight over it. Whereas with the dumpster one, I sort of just I eyeballed it. Basically. Excuse me, basically. So there's a by AML. So that's going to be interesting. See, they've done it the same way on this one as well. <laughs> now, there's two packs of these. So that should be it. Um, two packs of these. So, Lancaster B2 perforated oval gun barrels. So let's see if we can get this to. So I don't think. Oh, we can open it gently enough. So this is a resin set from a company called Quick Boost, as you can see. Quickboost.net. Specifically for the B2 Lancaster. More detailed gun barrels, so that's going to be an interesting swap out on, on, on those. I've got two sets. Why two sets? I hear you thinking. Um, well, I have devious plans for one of their fixes. B-35 Mosquitoes, it's their Mark 16, it's actually a B-35, that's what they scanned, so I have devious plans for one of those, um, something to do with 633 Squadron, so I need just a set of three or threes, and so I thought, well, I'm get, getting one set more to get two, these are only £2.30 each, so, you know, I'll have to grab them. Right, and finally, an absolute must, a pay mask uh, for the a canopy mask. Especially on a, a bomber, with the amount of um, extra, see it's all die cut already for you, it's all, all cut, ready to stick onto the aircraft. Um, these Edward sets, or you can get other, other, other brands do, do them as well. Absolutely invaluable for saving your sanity when it comes to painting, masking up the aircraft prior to painting. When it comes to the Fuga, I'm going to be masking that manually. The Lank, the last Lank I built, I masked it manually. I'm still very pleased, I'm immensely proud of that model and how it came out. This is going to make my life just a little bit easier. Okay, so that is a, wow, a very extended look at the Airfix Avro Lancaster B2. Let's put that back there. And um, a bit zombie on the box, by the way. Uh, and yeah, I hope, hope that helps you make decisions informed otherwise. So, until the next time, thank you for watching, take care, stay safe and be well, and I'll see you next time.